Yes, hello, good evening and welcome everyone to another round of interviews with experienced and inspiring teachers and teacher trainers. And tonight we have the one and only Mr. Nick Peachy. So hello, Nick, and welcome to our club. Hi, thank you for inviting me. And it's, it's a great honor to be invited. Thank you. Thank you for accepting my invitation. I am really excited about this interview, as are many of our members. So right now we are streaming into the club of successful female ELT entrepreneurs, so all women. Right. But I have some uh, guests in our club as well um, who are men. So let's see who will be in the live chat. And if anyone is going to be asking questions, of course, you can always ask questions in the chat and please do. Uh, but I have a lot of questions for Nick myself. So let's see how this goes. So once again, welcome, Nick. Um, as, as I always ask at the beginning, how are you and where are you? I am in the Czech Republic. Um, I'm in the UK in a small town, seaside town called Torquay, which is in Devon in the southwest. And I'm about 10 minutes walk from the sea. Oh, it's, not, it's not a good swimming night tonight, though. It's pretty cold and it's raining. <laughs> but, um, it's raining. Yeah, it's been raining all day today. Snowing and yesterday. here, snowing <laughs> here in the Czech Republic, yeah. <laughs> proper oh, well, it's, Yeah, it's not so cold as, as the Czech Republic, I'm sure. Okay, we are starting properly with a Brit talking about the weather. <laughs> mm -hmm. So okay. how, how are you doing? How have you been? What, what, what's new with you? Good. Uh, very busy at the moment, um, but mm -hmm. um, busy is always good. In, in fact, I, I always seem to be busy regardless of, uh, of what's happening. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things probably like most of the people watching, if you're if you are an entrepreneur and you've got your own or you're trying to launch your own business, you find you're always busy, even when you haven't got work or, or even when you're not getting paid for doing work, you seem to be busy anyway. You know, and that, that's one of the things. And, I guess it's one of the things that also keeps things interesting as well, because there's always something to do and usually something new to do as well. So that's great. Yeah, something new to do. And we are going to talk a lot about that because you are a fan of innovations, aren't you? I am, yes. Yeah. So um, for those who don't know you so well, would you be so kind and introduce yourself um, and uh, tell us a little bit more about how you can help us tonight in this interview? Um, I'm, I'm Nick Peachy um, and I, uh, I'm a, a, nowadays I have I have two kind of two jobs. Um, I work freelance as an educational technology trainer and developer and course developer. So that means working with lots of different companies uh, to develop um, usually technology based um, teacher training and, and student facing materials. And I have the other part of my job, which is, you know, the part that's closest to my heart, which is my own business, which is PG Publications, where I write my own um, um, materials, develop apps and develop courses for teachers that sort of try to, to promote the ideology that I've developed from my experience of teaching and, uh, and, and of, of teach training. So what is it that you believe in? You mentioned uh, you developed your ideology. I have always been a big fan and I've followed you uh, since 2010, around 2010. And I've always admired the natural approach, the humanistic approach in educational technology, which is a rare combination. You are bringing it closer to our hearts. So, what is what would you say about your ideology? I, I think you know, in terms of developing materials and in de de developing products for students and teachers, you know, I tried to focus on three things. You know, okay, you know, as language teachers, you know, I, you know, we're bound to teach language. You know, so I, I feel like you know, if a student does one of my lessons, they should take, they should obviously learn something about language. But I, I found in a lot of the materials and a lot of the teachers that I've worked with, 
for most people, that's where it stops. And, and I think that for me, that's not where it stops. That's where it begins. OK, yeah. they should learn something about language, but they should also learn something about the world. You know, you, sh you should be using language to discover the world and to discover your own worldview. And that's the third thing that, you know, in learning a language, you should also learn something about yourself. Oh, you know, yeah. so those are kind of my three core things that I think of when I'm developing materials, regardless of whether it's technology based or, or, or whether it's sort of a more humanistic approach, but I, I don't know. But, you know, those are the things that are important to me. And especially that last one, you know, students should be learning about themselves, their worldview and, and developing their opinions. Yes. Absolutely. I believe in the same thing. And um, I've just been to a teacher conference in Bratislava in Slovakia. And one of the presenters had that quote of yours on the <laughs> on their presentation, actually, how we should always learn about the world and ourselves as well. It's also my favorite quote. It was Mark Andrews, who is also a yeah. dear friend and colleague, and he's going to be presenting at my conference in two months. So yeah, we're on the same boat, I would say. How did you get to all of that? Would you be so kind and told us a little bit about your beginnings, how you started teaching? Because we're, uh, some of us are um, less experienced than you, and we always like to hear stories from more experienced teachers. Well, you might be surprised to, to hear that my teaching experience actually started in prison, um, but I wasn't actually a, I wasn't actually a prisoner. Um, I, I actually studied music. I studied the guitar, and um, my next door neighbour taught art therapy courses um, in the prison. And because uh, you know I was a student and I needed money, she said, "Well, they need a guitar teacher at the prison. Are you interested?" And I, I, I didn't know how to teach at all, and but, but I knew how to play the guitar. So, you know, I went to the prison and started sort of teaching prisoners uh, to play the guitar, blues guitar, once a week, and that was my sort of first trip into teaching, and it got me really interested in teaching and you know how you help people to learn and starting to thinking about how I learn myself. And when I finished my degree, I decided to do a CELTA course, what, what mm -hmm. used to be CERT TEFL. And I went to Cairo in Egypt and, and studied to be an English teacher there and started teaching in Cairo. And I really got so interested in it that it took over from the music. And in, in fact, I stopped playing for a long time, probably for about 10 years. And, and I was sort of obsessed with teaching and, and, and sort of developing my teaching. And from Cairo, I went to um, Ukraine. I worked in the Ukraine for in Ukraine for a, a while. Mm -hmm. uh, for a year, I went to worked in Singapore, um, in North Africa, Morocco, Tun and Tunisia, um, Spain, Italy, and by that time, I started. I was in. I think I was working in Barcelona doing CELTA training, and I met someone who was doing a, a master's in educational technology. And this was in about 1998, you know, in the last century. And so I started to, and I, th I didn't know anything about it. I just bought a computer and I thought, oh, that sounds really interesting. I don't know anything about that. So I studied, started to, uh, a master's in educational technology and, and really got interested and hooked on it. And, uh, and uh, it just sort of developed from there. What did it look like in 1998? I remember first using the internet in 1995. What did educational technology look like in 1998? <laughs> Um, it was mostly text-based and, and on very badly designed websites. Um, um, what, there was a, a product called uh, GeoCities, I think it was called, that would allow you to build your own website. And I can remember learning HTML code and building my first site. And, and after about an hour, I'd managed to put together a square table with a little image in one block of the table and some text underneath. And it was like, wow, I've got... I've, got a website or well I hadn't got a website I'd got a web page and I, I didn't really know how to get it onto the internet and stuff like that but and but you know things like that have been, become so much easier you know it's so much easier now than it's ever been before really. 
would you still be able to program your own website without using one of the templates like WordPress or? Um, I, I have a WordPress site and I use a, a, a site designer, uh, a, a site design package called Cal Calibri. And, you know, I, I sort of use bits from it and drag and drop it, but I can, st I still do some coding for some things, just basic bits of coding. It's still really useful to know it. You know, because mm -hmm. there are times when things just won't look right. And if you can get into the code, you can sort it out generally. You know, and it's been, it's sort of still a really valuable tool for a lot of things. Or you can hack your way around things when they're not behaving and stuff like that. So uh, not that many teachers are attracted to technology. What attracted you first to technology? You have a cool uh, story about how you started teaching is there anything like that when it comes to technology educational technology i, I guess it, it had a lot to do with my first daughter she was born in spain and uh -huh. um, i wanted to keep her in touch with her first language culture and at the time i bought her some cd-rom games yeah. Uh, on CD ROMs, you know, and, you know things like green eggs and ham. They were just sort of you click them and they'd sort of say things and things like that. And um, it, it looked really interesting. And sort of, so I started getting involved in it. And, and um, you know, I think at the time somebody mentioned something about, oh, well, you know, we're all going to be avatars and we're going to be living in virtual, uh, negotiating virtual worlds. And, and strangely enough, my first experience of virtual reality was in Barcelona. And again, this was about 98. And um, I was in a pub and uh, there were there were these three people who had this virtual reality game and they were giving people the chance to experience it. And it was this headset that you put on and you had a handle and you could jump from rock to rock and you had uh -huh. to ju jump through these rocks. And if you missed the rock, you died kind of thing. But weird kind of virtual reality experience in, mm -hmm. in in a pub in a bar in Barcelona in 1998 and you know and now Mark Zuckerberg is saying it's going to be the next big thing but you know I've heard that too many times already <laughs> we thought it was oh yeah this is going to be the next big thing you know back in 1998 but we're still waiting well we have the next big thing or it's already kind of here and we're going to talk about it I suppose mm -hmm. yeah talking about GPT open AI all of that but um you have to wait for a little bit because I want to get to it I am a big fan since um the 2010 2011 um when you started um um sharing with the world through your newsletter so i am one of the first subscribers to your newsletter i think because you 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 said on linkedin recently that you've been running it for 13 years and i realized wow this is how long i know nick and i was i felt so fortunate to find you because uh, this was around the time when i got rid of course books and i was looking for different resources also online for those students who were interested in technology so i'm very interested in what happened in the past and of course we're going to talk about the present and the future as well but um, exciting years those were, yeah, very, very mm. exciting years. And um, I like to play and I see you are someone who also likes to play. Otherwise you wouldn't be so excited about these things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the kind of different tools and the different developments in educational technology keep it very interesting. You know, mm -hmm. there, there, there seem to be a kind of good flow of new things. And, you know, for me, it started at a time when, you know, I'd done my CELTA, I'd done my DELTA, I was a CELTA trainer, I, I was doing a master's and, you know, things were starting to get a bit kind of flat. And, it, it, it you know, this constant change was something that I liked about it, you know, especially in the inter early days of the Internet, when it was kind of like the Wild West, like anybody would put anything up, you know. I can remember seeing this ridiculous um, website of this dancing chicken and you would, you know, just type in um, 
sentences and it would sing them and dance to it and things like that. I don't know where it is now. I mean, this is years and years ago, but, you know, somebody would put these ridiculous things up. And at that time, you know, everything was free because, you know, there wasn't the means to charge for things, you know, there wasn't mm -hmm. a reliable payment system and things like that. Lots of information for free and, you know, um, lots of universities posting lots of lots of information and and publishing online for free and great online journals that you could access for for free and you know it, it seemed like you know some kind of ut utopian ideal of you know how education should be but you know on the other hand even at that time you know even like 99 98 99 there were people sort of having the same arguments about the internet then that people are having about chat gtp now and it was like oh our students are all going to cheat how will this change exams you know are we all going to be made redundant and this you know what about censorship and you know who's controlling all this and all of the same sort of arguments that are coming back again and again were, were happening then you know that ha that happened before that about television you know and but yes you know, happening about the internet and and now it's industrial and revolution as well yeah it's just mm -hmm. another step so what what are you telling uh, teachers now who are afraid of this change and that we are going to be um yes yeah, surrounded by robots and we'll lose jobs what are you telling people well you know it's not a bad thing to be afraid but you know things are going to change anyway you know we can't you can't sort of roll back time and you can't stop these things you know once yeah. the genie is out of the box i think it, you know it's going to happen and chat G gtp is really the genie out of the box at the moment yeah. i think and you know it is really sort of disrupting things not just because it's of what it's going to do in education and what it's going to do in exams because it's going to alter the way people work in their daily lives and people the way people create in their daily lives and those those kind of things you can't if that if it's impacting your your personal life and your professional life then it's got to impact your academic life you need to yeah. know about those things really and we were at, so i'm a little bit younger so i remember the big change around the years 2009 2010 uh then the smartphones came and changed yeah. the game as well um that was an exciting time for me um a lot of a lot of exploring a lot of discovering so yeah. many new apps that were both on my pc and in my phone and i remember being so into it that i was just sharing and sharing and i saw you doing the same and you still doing it i kind of slowed down uh but you where, where do you keep uh, okay let me rephrase it where, where do you get the energy to constantly look for the new uh, things and new apps and exploring it like I was for around 10 years and I'm like I need a break I I think uh, I mean I have a I kind of connected to a kind of good information network in that you know I've, I've subscribed to various newsletters and you know rss feeds and things like that which i set up years ago and so things come to me now it's almost as like you know i don't have to go and look for things they're coming to me and it's you know just a matter of then trying to find the, the time to sift through you know what's good and what's bad and i guess that's the time consuming place and then of course and then of course you know deciding where i'm going to put put it and store it and how i'm going to feed it out because you know, I have Facebook pages, have LinkedIn pages, I have a Telegram group, I have, yes, you know, you're everywhere. my stupid pages. So I have to kind of try to kind of be ergonomic about the ways that I update things and things like that. So I have various number of sort of virtual tools that kind of help me to sort of make that process quite ergonomic. I mean, Buffer is a very good one that kind mm -hmm. of updates uh, quite a few things and the scoop it site as well updates to other things and things like that
But at the same time, I'm sort of collecting them and storing them and sort of trying to build them into products as well. You know, like mm -hmm. all of these sites that I share now, I've built, it, I've built an app called the Digital Toolbox. And so I feed them into that as well. So people can sort of get them. And that's a kind of, that's a product, a commercial product as well. So that generates a little bit of revenue for me as well, which helps kind of incentivize the process as well. But I guess you know, part of the drive is to is to keep up as well. You know, as a as a, an educational technology um, consultant or developer or whatever, you know, there's always the feeling that you know if I don't do this, well, you know, I'm going to be out of work, and I can't afford to be out of work, not for a few more years yet <laughs> at all. It's good to be in the front, and you've been there for so 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 many years. And you have been that resource for me, you know, and for so many teachers. So thank you for that. Um, I know a lot of teachers that I've talked to recently that I mentioned that I'm going to be doing this interview. We're very excited about it and asked me if I could share it with them as well. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. It's not something, it, it's, a, it's a weird thing because, you know, to me, it's just something that I do every day. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a lot of, I've got a jacket on now, but, you know, most of the time I'm sitting here in, a, in some jogging pants and a T-shirt and, you know, dropping my daughter off to school, going to the supermarket and coming that. back. You know, it doesn't, it's hard to feel, that's one of the things about the in internet, really, it's hard to feel that you're having an impact, really, and um, so, you know, it's nice to sort of get that kind of feedback because it's like, oh, well, I'm not wasting my time. You know, somebody's actually oh, listening. We are it's we're still following you. Like Don't stop, please. We are still following you even all these years on. Um, so, I'm, so I'm very interested in these years before the pandemic because, of course, I'd like to hear um, mm -hmm. from you how you think that the pandemic changed uh, educational technology big way in a big way obviously but there were some of us who did use technology before the pandemic uh, a smaller number of us but um, very passionate about it how would you describe the years be before the pandemic well it's a funny thing because you know at the beginning of the pandemic i i was contacted by a school director uh, three school directors in in fact and they wanted some advice on you know they they realized that they had to get online because the pandemic had just started and one of them said to me he said it's like we've been dragged 10 years into the future and i said well you know i'm sorry actually what you've been dragged 10 years into the present yeah. And yes. uh, because, you know, a lot of these things were around a long time before that, you know, Zoom yes. has been around what, maybe 10, 15 years, you know, and before that Adobe Connect was the one that everybody yes. used oh, and it's been around that. since, you know, probably the turn of the century. Uh, and, you know, so there, there, there are, these things have been around for a long time. I think, you know, there has been this sort of, before the pandemic, there, there were lots of good things happening, like, um, you know, the Web 2.0 kind of move, which was the move from where, you know, you had to be a coder in order to put together a website and you'd put together a website with your comp content on. And then Web 2.0 changed that because there were companies just who would su supply you with the platform and say, OK, here's the platform you do the content like YouTube. You know, all of a sudden you could put your videos yeah. online and you didn't have to have any technical knowledge. You know, WordPress, you could build a website in 10 minutes, you know, and, and have it online and you didn't need to know how to do HTML coding. And, you know, now, you know, building apps is, is something that you can do in sort of minutes rather than, well, maybe an hour, you know, instead of literally having a team of people spending a month on it, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it, it became much, much easier. And, and a lot of that started well before the pandemic. And uh, I think, you know, the pandemic, much as it was an, a very awful thing, has had a really positive impact on, on education and, and teachers' use of educational technology because, 
people were kind of forced into that space and have to forced into dealing with those things you know if there's anything good that's come from come from this pandemic is that's probably it you know is that yeah. now teachers feel much 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 more comfortable um, sort of um, working with technology much more interested and you know I've seen you know since it's happened I've seen sort of so many more teachers who are out there on social media putting together really great content for learning and you know putting themselves over, out there and developing their own business and you know the the best things that I'm seeing are coming from individual teachers rather than from big companies, you know. Really? The people who've learned how to sort things out themselves and doing their own stuff, you know. And a lot of the time what they're doing is much better, you know, much more original, much more, you know, diverse than, than a lot of stuff that's being put out by sort of large companies um, who, who are kind of slower to move, slower to adapt to change. I'm more worried about engaging on on sort of what are seen as kind of more edgy um, platforms like TikTok or something like that. You know, it's it's taken them yeah. much longer to get involved in those areas. No. Yeah. So, do you remember uh, what what were the biggest uh, players? Who were the biggest players uh, in edutech in uh, uh, ELT? Let's let's focus on ELT uh, before the pandemic. I remember several bigger companies that were doing really well, like English Central or um, yeah, I can't remember at the moment. Lyrics Training, yeah, mm -hmm. all these. All these apps that move to smartphones as well. Uh, in in your world, what, what what were the biggest players? Yeah, I think Lyrics Training is was great. It was a great app in English Central. Um, you know, platforms like Moodle, which enabled people to create their own courses. Mm -hmm. You know, also great. Um, you know, a lot of things like Zoom were were doing very well before the pandemic probably not nothing like as well as they did because of it but but before the pandemic things like that were happening there were, were companies who were producing you know online courses and delivering sort of face-to-face -face training in this kind of environment you know so you know there are there are quite a few um there were you know social media has been been very busy well before the pandemic yeah you no know, I, was, I was involved in um second life for quite a while um uh -huh. well. I remember, can you can you tell us with, more yeah. What was Second so, Life for those who don't know? I, I, I'm talking about it in the past tense, whereas it is still around. You know, Second okay. Life is a, a three-dimensional virtual platform where you you can enter it as an avatar, avatar, and you you can fly and you can fly to different islands, and and people can have their own islands and build, um, you know, their own ex experiences. It's like entering a game, as having an avatar entering a game. I guess it's it's the precursor to the metaverse that, that Mark Zuckerberg's yeah. trying to, yeah. to build. And you can actually go into Second Life now, I think, in your with your virtual goggles on uh, your Oculus Rift and, and move around it. But for a while, you know, there were lots of education things happening there. There was a, a school called Language Lab who had a collection of islands where, and I had worked with them sort of building business English courses. They'd built a, a, a business office and students went in there and had their their business English lessons and did role plays in there and things like that. Um, British Council had an island there which had a, a virtual London eye and the, and things like mm -hmm. that. And you know there were lots of cities there that you could go and visit as well and sort of replicas of the the Eiffel Tower and parts of Paris. And you know it's a an interesting place for a while. And. Um, you know, you could use voice and you could speak to people. You had your headphones on yeah. and you chatted for people. I had a virtual office there for a while and I had a few meetings sort of like like this. And um, they'd made the avatars lip sync. So if you went up close to the avatar, you could see its mouth moving as you were talking as well. Things like that. It was, it's kind of an interesting time. And, um, and what's interesting about it, especially with the kind of Mark Zuckerberg turn now with Metaverse, that it... And, because for a while second life was huge and it was i mean yeah. it was in it was in the news a lot it, it was, was being everywhere. incorporated in, you know it, even in a in a in a one of the episodes of um uh, csi miami csi there was a one the way there was a crime in in second life kind of thing and things like that and when when things like facebook and twitter came along 
that were kind of micro blogging platforms, they totally knocked Second Life out of space because it, it, they just took over from it. It was so much easier, so much more immediate. You didn't need a powerful uh, computer to get on there. You didn't need a sort of headset. And, and, and ironically, it was people like Mark Zuckerberg that knocked you know, these, these 3D virtual worlds uh, mm -hmm. um, into obscurity again. And now here he is trying to sort of, it, Put his own spin and, and create the metaverse and again ironically it's going to be things looked very simple and text-based like chat gtp that are, that are knocking meta the metaverse back into sort of second place a bit again because you know there's no, interest like in the metaverse now it's you know it's chat gtp and it's ai which is very yeah. much you know a text-based interaction a very simple text-based interaction you know so it's rather ironic where do we stand as English teachers in all of this? Well, you know, I think we stand in in a pretty good place, especially, you know, so too. those of us who have that. been engaging with technology, especially during the pandemic, teachers have learned so much. And, you know, if you take that with you, and I know lots of teachers have said, oh, I can't wait to get back to the physical classroom and blah 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 but you know after a few months that's going to wear off you know that gets old pretty quickly and you, you're going to think yeah yeah there were some good things about being online too and um you know i think people learned a lot about tools and a lot about um teaching a lot about body language and and how to convey themselves online as well and you know and i think there's a, a lot still to be learned from that and taken into the physical classroom and and so with those skills, we can go into the future quite well, if you've, I think, if you've adapted well enough and now. Would you agree that thanks to uh, this revolution in edutech um, during the pandemic, teachers focus more on what the students actually need and not so much on the course book? If we look at like general English courses, let maybe not schools, maybe not young learners, but more adults, because this is how I feel when uh, when the, my colleagues uh, are teaching online, they're they're not using course books like they used to in their classroom. So, mm -hmm. um, as a big fan of teaching without course books, I like to see that. Do you? See the yeah. same around the world that people teach less without course books thanks to educational technology well i i think so and i hope so i know there's a lot more interested in it certainly in non-paper-based materials i mean I, I myself my publishing is all done digitally and i you know people access my materials through html5 and through an app that they can get and i think you know and it's, it's much more dynamic and interactive. And I think, you know, what the, the publishers were very good during the pandemic at letting people use their products and often their digital products for free. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that those products were that great. You know, they were still designed for the face to face classroom, yeah. you know, and and still, you know, I think most publishers are finding it very difficult to make that leap to producing materials that will work in a kind of hybrid situation or, yeah. or a remote oh. teaching situation. I think they're still sort of struggling with that because it's it it's you know, to be fair, it's it's cannibalizing their 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 market base. They're, you know, most publishers' market base is is paper-based course books. Yep. They make a huge amount of money from that. Yep. And to sort of move away from that is 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 a very difficult and dangerous thing to do. And I think that's where people, smaller companies and people like ourselves have the opportunity to sort of, you know, uh, find a place in the market and uh, because the, it's not that's being wonderful. filled by the big publishers. That's, that's wonderful to hear because even here in our teachers club, some, some uh, teachers are interested in going into uh, creating apps or creating materials online. And uh, I am their biggest fan because um, when it comes from the teacher, not the big company, as you said, uh, the most beautiful, um, the most beautiful things get produced. I, I really see see it everywhere now and uh, um, we can now all be creators material creators app creators and that's exciting it is yeah yeah I think it's great yeah yeah, yeah. so um, 
how can educational technology, if we look at it now from more mindset point of view, um, how can educational technology be useful in ELT? If you could give us some overview of why it's good to use technology um, in, in our courses, in our sessions with um, adult learners and children. Because we are always online on the screens these days, so sell it to us. Well, I think there there are lots of reasons for it. I mean, for, for one thing is accessibility. Once you have an internet connection, you have access to a multitude of different things. And, you know, as a, as a teacher as well, you have a multi access to students all over the world. And again, students have access to teachers all over the world, all of which is great. You know, there are some great products and platforms that enable us to build products. You know, it's never been easier to produce a sort of high quality digital learning video, you know, for example, you know, which makes learning that much more exciting and, and yeah. accessible 24 seven, you know, building animations, you know, we can build animations without any animation skills, you know, using basic apps, you know, or we can get chat GTP to build them for us or something like that. You know, I mean, there, there are so many more things that we can do. And, you know, and this is part of our lives. You know, the internet is a, an essential part of people's everyday lives now. And to, you know, and so it should be part of their education. And so they, they I think they need to help negotiating it. And that's what teachers can help them do is, you know, help, help students negotiate you know things like you know understanding what what's the difference between real news and fake news or how you how you find out what the difference is you know there are still lots of things that students need help with you know my, my older daughter for example you know she's she's what people would call a, a digital native she's grown up with these things all the whole time but she's she's very good at using them socially with her friends you know and texting the whole time and, and using Instagram. But when it comes to doing work and really making work, you know, she still lacks some of the skills and has had, had to learn some of the skills to do that. You know, and I think a lot of a lot of younger people are still underskilled when it comes to, you know, putting together a PowerPoint presentation. You know, mm -hmm. or or you know putting together a really well designed pamphlet or document using a design you know design package there are still lots of skills that sort of people need be you know beyond you know being able to say hey how are you doing on facebook or what's up or something like that so no, that's, easy. That, that's, that's, that's easy that's yeah. easy but going deeper and like getting down yeah. to the mud actually not everyone does that that's what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. i think the, the the kind of you know the work associated skills are still aren't skills that come naturally just through you know because you're good at you know texting your friends or posting or making TikTok videos or something like that you know there are still other skills that you need yeah and of course if we go back to elt uh just um the environment that we are in in all of these um apps and and uh using all these tools it's it's always in english yeah so it helps our learners to feel more natural and to feel surrounded by english which is the point for non-native speakers to immerse themselves in the English environment yeah yeah and have real opportunities to use the yeah. language you know I, I can remember when uh, when I worked in in Kiev for example uh, and, and in Cairo you know my students had no real access this was sort of back in you know early 90s early to mid 90s my students had no real access to kind of real English language use it was a subject that you know they thought oh, well I'm studying this but I'm never going to get to use it yeah and we would sort of you know, um, go home and bring back newspapers, English yes. newspapers. This is an English newspaper, you know, or, or there were, you know, there were local newspapers Some in some places like Cairo, there was a local English newspaper. We'd get them and chop them up for our students and find all the interesting bits for them and things like that to try and show them that, hey, you could get this newspaper and read the news in English. It gives you access to that. But, you know, that's easy now. You know, you can you can use English for so many things if you, if you speak English now just to go on 
the internet and get news or whatever hobby you have, you can follow it yeah. up in English or you know, whatever you're interested in, you can just sort of go online and, and develop your ability to do it in English or yeah. play games, play computer games in English. You know. I, I can remember a, a years ago I had a Spanish student and she, she came to class every week and she said she was really annoyed because her sister never had lessons but her, her sister liked to play Dungeons and Dragons and she played it virtually <laughs> but by, by email. And she was learning better English because she was sort of interacting in these chat rooms, you know, these yeah. Dungeons and Dragons chat rooms and through text and things like that through uh, and learning so much from playing these games, you know. And now that that's sort of so much easier, you know, you can do so much of that these days. So what, what do you tell teachers who are you know taking their distance and and they don't want to use technology and uh, they would rather go back to the newspapers how do you convince them that it's a good thing um, I don't know not that many of them approach me about things like that probably they go to someone else for sympathy in that area um, <laughs> okay. but you know I, I think sort of you know the mo the most compelling arguments are really easy to think about you know what are your students going to need in in your in their day-to-day -day lives you know, yes it's, it's just that simple you know if, if you're really interested in helping your students in in what's going to become their their future you know then you need to engage in this and if if you're not willing to engage in that and then then you're and you're not interested in your your students future and supporting them and helping them sort of realize that then you know, what are you doing in teaching really you know the better way there are, there are easier ways to make a living if that if it's not for that then you know go and do something else you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what is hot these days apart from chat GPT? What is hot among learners of English? Which platforms or which apps would you mention that come to mind that are very, very popular apart from uh, places like Zoom where we connect, but where people actually learn? the language it, it's i think you know a lot of the things that teachers are using are things like sort of quizlet mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. platforms like that um then you know which which is okay you know they're you know sort of they're, they're kind of replicating something that we did sort of it with you know paper and pens and or pieces of card in in the Flesh traditional cards, yeah you know that 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 kind of thing you know a digitizing it and and that's a good step i think to some extent um nowadays it's hard to sort of pick anything that hasn't yes. been impacted by ai because you know every firm every company is i don't know if it's just a kind of marketing tool become a marketing tool but every company is integrating ai into what they do you know quizlet is an example of that actually i was talking to someone from quizlet two days ago and uh -huh. they've developed an ai i bot that can help you kind of review your flashcards and and things like that so they've put together a whole bunch of flat flashcards for IELTS and, and TOEIC and things like that to, to sort of help people use them, uh, to help students use them. And lots of these are AI generated. And uh, For spaced so repetition, think, yeah? For spaced repetition. Yeah, it can, can time their spaced repetition. Mm -hmm. It can help them review, um, you know, but I think AI is becoming sort of integrated into most things. I mean, I, I, I've integrated it into my own materials as well. You know, I've started, Okay, please tell us um, how. Um, a lot of the voices now I'm using AI voice, AI produce, artificial intelligence produced voices, um, and they're as good as the voice actors that you know I was hiring before. And AI avatars in um, to do talking heads in instructional videos, things like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those are two things that have been really useful for me. And for me, the avatars particularly has made it much easier for me to sort of produce a range of diverse materials because it's easier to have you know voices of South African speakers, Indian speakers, right. you know. And uh, you know, and have different faced avatars so that they're not they're not all you know your 
British white middle class English voices anymore, you know, is it which is very difficult to get, you know, when you're when you're sort of hiring voiceover artists and things like that. It's very difficult mm -hmm. to get that and very expensive to get that range. But it's so now those are, the those are out of the job. Those are out of the job. Uh yeah, perhaps, yeah. Yeah. Or looking for different types of work. But exactly. We just have to rearrange our lives now, right? That's yeah, how I, I think that that is true, you know. And I think you know, there's a lot of people. I mean, course book writers, things like AI and ChatGTP is going to have a huge impact on how they do their work. You know, course writers, course materials writers. You know, I think yeah, it's going to have a huge impact. They aren't necessarily out of the of the job, but they'll have to learn to use uh, different AI tools to to deal with what they do. I think. Uh, they won't have to use them, but the ones that do will be producing work much more quickly and much more efficiently than the ones that don't. So, you know, I think the have to comes from the drive to, to sort of keep stay in work, you know. And I think, you know, that's something to be aware of. It, it's not necessarily that, you know, AI will put us out of a job, but it's people who know how to use AI will put out of work people who don't know how to use yes. it. No, and that's why it's good. Things. That's why it's good to jump on that bandwagon. That's why it's good to do it now, isn't it, sir? Yes, so it is. Yeah. I I can already see how much how how amazing and how much progress I am making with my students just with help of ChatGPT, and in my work as a freelancer as well. Um, it's. Um, as I heard somewhere uh, recently, it's simply assisting our creativity and it's fastening the process of working with whatever information you are working with yeah, and cre creating new things. And I, I don't believe it's going to replace us. It's going to speed us up. Yeah, I think it's going to speed us up. I mean, there, there are kind of downsides to that in that, you know, by by, by being being made more productive, it, it's, it's the rule of life that the more productive you are, the more productivity your employers expect from you, you know. Um, well, but, we, but are the moment, here. we are independent here. We are independent. Yeah, if you're independent, so then, you know, it, it's a good thing. And it is, it's another good reason to become independent is yes. that, you know, it will enable you to do that much more things, you know, and you can outsource some skills to it. You know, if you're not that great at marketing, you can get it to do your marketing and Absolutely. produce a marketing plan for you and write your marketing copy if you want to. Everything. So, you know, it, it can sort of help, you know, fill out the skill set where you feel that you're weak on it. And That's by it. doing that, it can help you develop that skill set as well, because you'll start to become more astute at deciding when it's producing something that's good for you and when it's not. So, you know, there, there are kind of those are all good steps to being better at the things that you do, you know. But for me, I, I, I mean, I've spent the last two or three work week, weeks kind of immersed in chat GTP to, to write a course, which I'm actually launching next week. I, I'm sort of starting to, about chat you know, GPT. Uh, I guess, you know, it'll, it'll start from the very beginning and go to sort of some more advanced stuff. But, you know, um, you know, and and go into a bit more depth. On, I mean, the key to Jack, Chat DP is what's called prompt engineering, and it's mm -hmm. how you write the instructions that you give it. Basically, yes. you know, you can just go and chat to it like a person and say, uh, uh, "Can you write me this, please?" Or "Can you do this for me, please?" But there is another level that you can set it up to sort of automate processes for you and to do quite complex stuff and and things like that. And uh, you know. Which are quite some really nice things that you can give scripts to students to put into chat, chat DP, GPT. For example, I've, I've written one that's uh, a, their English friend. So basically, it's a script that turns chat GTP into your English friend. So yes. whenever you are, if you want to complain about something, you go to it and you complain, oh, I've been having a really bad day today, you know, and chat DP to, will start to talk to you and tell you, hey, don't feel so bad about it. What's what's going on? And you can chat to it in English and it will be a sympathetic listener. But you can change 
you can adapt the script so that it's actually not a sympathetic listener as well. So if you use the template, you adapt it. And you, so you go and say to Jack T, GTP, oh, yeah, I'm having a bad day today. You know, I really had a bad lesson. And Jack, Jack GTP will say to you, hey, you know, get off your ass and move it. You know, you need to put yourself together and try harder. So you can sort of, you know, decide what kind of friend you want yep. just by altering the script, which is kind yep. of nice. Yeah. Yeah, by writing the, 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 the good prompts, uh, yeah. the appropriate prompts and what you want to get out of it. But you are still the creator of it because you yeah. ask for it. Yeah, you ask for uh, yeah. being uh, for GPT being motivational or lighthearted or mm -hmm. supportive or strict with you or I've, I've brainstormed my my ideas, my business ideas. I've brainstormed my pricing i just just went um to gpt on a friday afternoon saying mm, this week wasn't so good i just tried different things and then i passed it on to my students and exactly i recommended gpt as their english friend because mm -hmm. they often say i have no one to practice with outside of our lessons and before we always um discussed how they could make friends with somebody online and now the more introverted people don't have to they just have mm -hmm. gpt as their best friend yeah. And you can voice activate it as well, because so it can be spoken English, you know, if you get well, a Well, that's the a new GPT-4. That's the yeah. new version, right? You can, you can even do it, if you're using it in Chrome, you can get a plug-in so that you can speak to it, even the, the, in the older version. So, you know, it's not... It's, it's not a problem to speak to it, but that it, it, it's, it's a really nice example because my, my first experience of using AI with, with um, students was in about 2003. It was just after the Stanley Kubrick film um, called AI, which was about, it was a, basically it was a remake of the prim, prim, um, Pinocchio story, only in the story AI is a, a um, the Pinocchio is a, a boy robot who wants to be real. And at the, after the film, they put up a website and it had a, an AI um, chatbot there that you could go and interact with. And I got some of my students to go. They were quite young there, about 11 or 12. And I didn't want to put them in chat rooms with real people because that would have been dangerous. So they went and chatted with, that, with this chatbot on AI. And what I found from it was actually it, it was made a lot more sense and was a lot better chat partner than most real people because you know most real people you chat to in a chat room only really care about themselves you know and you know they're not in that interested in you they might be interested in telling themselves about you but you no know, and but the the chat bot was really you know it was really engaging and it had some interesting views and you know and i think that's sort of with chat gtp now you know you can talk about anything with it and you know for hours and hours play. You know, you can have a much better hours. conversation than with with most people, really. So, and, and you, you should can probably be doing this with that GTP now. It would make yeah, much more sense yeah. than I do. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I think I, I I noticed like you can be as annoying as you want and talk to it for hours, and it still will be polite and answer <laughs> your questions. And what I really like is that it remembers the history of the chat so it reminds yeah. you things and it's like chatty yeah. and and like like a real person i love it mm -hmm. i think uh in these days of uh, um everyone experiencing a lot of loneliness because of the pandemic and post pandemic um it can be a good friend as well yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's only a matter of time before it has a face that you can choose yeah. and a voice and you know and and sort of empathetic expressions and things like that is you know six months probably i don't know <laughs> No. So, yeah. So, Nick, what do you think is the future of uh, educational technology when it comes to language teaching? What 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 are you predicting will happen? Well, you know, the, I, I think that, that it's always dangerous to sort of look in, in your crystal ball because probably sort of six months ago, you know, not, not, not met that many people would have seen that, the, you know, AI would have made such a huge leap so quickly. You know, I, it was something that was coming. It's been coming for a long time, but, you know, like, 
you know, the progress between, you know, like I said, 2003, when I first tried a chatbot and, you know, 2020 probably wasn't that great. And yet, yet you know, within yeah. six months, we've made this huge leap. So, you know, it's, it's dangerous to predict things or, or to, to try and accurately predict things. But, you know, I think, you know, one of them, of course, will be that, you know, it will have a face, you know, AI will start having a face. Um, you know, it will be it will be a face that moves, it will be look and look and feel more like a human on the screen. You know, it we will see it integrated into um, augmented reality. So it won't just be a, a point of going to your computer, you'll probably a, be able to sort of hold your camera up to, to different things as you can now with augmented reality and an avatar will appear and you'll be able to speak to it. You know, those things are probably could be done within the next six to 12 months, um, whether they will be or not, but they could be, you know, the technology is there for it. And so, you know, if you have that level of, of sophistication, then, you know, it's it probably wouldn't be that difficult to program it to be, a, be become an English language teacher. But in the sense of, you know, an English language teacher that will teach you vocabulary and grammar, you know, I'm not sure if it's an, an, and, you know, this comes back to the things that, you know, where we started about that, those three things that a good English lesson yeah. should have. Yeah. You know, it's not just about the language. It's about, you know, it's about learning about the world and about learning about yourself. And I think those, you know, those are still the benefits of a real teacher. You know, although it, it can sort of function so we won't be replaced. Teacher, we won't be replaced in that sense. Do you think I think it has to get a lot, lot better yet. I think one of the key things really is, you know, one of the key things that teachers have that really makes the difference for students. And, and you know, there's research that proves this is that, you know, you make good progress with a teacher, with a teacher that cares about you. And, you know, and that that caring is such a huge element of, of whether you learn or not. You know, yep. that makes such a huge difference in somebody's yep. lives, you know, and it, it's questionable whether, you know, a student will feel that an AI really cares about them, whether however lifelike that robot what is, you know, it's got to go a long way to sort of synthesize the fact that it cares about you. And you know, accountability, and when a student comes to the lesson, they feel bad if they didn't do their homework or they didn't work mm -hmm. on their English. They're not going to feel bad in front of a robot, right? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel that bad. But you know, yeah. maybe I would. I don't know. But Let's see. You know, Let's I think see it that. has to go a long way before we before we get to that that um, stage. And I think you know, this sounds. I don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, to 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 get a robot that is human enough to to produce to teach someone and to produce the effect of that degree of empathy would be so expensive that it wouldn't be used for teaching, you know, because we'd be <laughs> still be so much cheaper, you know. I mean, it's a it's a terrible thing to admit, but you it know, is a terrible one thing. One of the reasons we won't get replaced that quickly is because we're going to be a lot cheaper for a long time. Yeah, sadly. Yeah, you touched upon a very important thing. Um, Isn't that awful? Mm -hmm, yes. Um, why is it? Why is it good to let? Let's change for for a little bit from um, educational technology to freelancing. Why is it good to be a freelancer? We mentioned a few things. We are independent. We can do whatever we want. Um, we can um, create whatever we want. We are not dependent on our employer. Why, why do you why do you enjoy being a freelancer? Yeah, I think it's a lot of those things. I mean, it's, it's a lot about having to do, being able to do different things every day and, and maybe having to do different things, uh, expanding the skill set. I've got a much broader skill set now than I have. You know, I did an MBA, which I never would have thought would have interested me, but I did it with Relish and did it online and, uh, um, okay. and learned a lot from doing that. And, you know, sort of building out, out the skill set and learning new things is always great. I mean, financially, I think, you know, if you're working in a job, your, your, you know, your, fine, your income is defined and you yeah. have to live within that. You know, you're stuck with it. 
you know, especially if that job takes up all your energy and you don't have it, the, the, the energy to do anything else, that's where you are and that's where you are for life. You know, and nobody is going to come along, especially not if you're a teacher, nobody's going to come along and, you know, offer you a big pay rise or make you rich or buy you a Mercedes, but, but you know, if that's what you want. But, you know, as a freelance, at least you have the, the, the potential to you think, well, I'm working hard, but I'm earning a bit more because of it, you know. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, and that's that's good. You know, you have the potential to expand what you do and expand your income as well. You know, I, I don't think I really initially became freelance because of the money. And I did it mainly because at the time I wanted to spend time with my daughter. I enjoyed working from home. I've been working from home since 2003, I think. And, you know, and I think that was... You know, it was a lifestyle choice for me, but I, you know, I, you know, I have a, a lot more money because, you know, I work freelance and I've got to do these interesting things and my career's expanded out kind of um, exponentially with that. So I think that's, you know, I've been really lucky in that way. And you've been very busy. I just went to your website, if you don't mind. Uh, we mm -hmm. agreed that I can share it. Um, for those uh, of you watching who don't know uh, much about Nick's work, he is very busy. <laughs> and uh, it shows if you go to his website, peachypublications.com. I can scroll down a little bit. Uh, please check it out. Have a look at the lesson plans. They are beautiful, visually so so beautiful. I I love your lesson plans. Uh, you like modern art, don't you? It, it, funnily enough, the artwork on the on the, the the is in the two books at the top. There's one two that I've developed quite recently. One is fault line which i which i did the production for which is um, raising funds for mm -hmm. um, survivors of the earthquake in turkey the cover was done by one of the writers but all of the images in it were produced by um ai they were produ produced by no way. Too. so all of the the artwork within it is produced by uh, by artificial intelligence and the other books um stories of teacher authenticity again it was another one that was produced by you know, it's a collection of ch with chapters from teachers all over the world, and all of the artwork and in that one as well was produced in. Uh, I produced it using uh, AI to 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 produce kind of abstract art images for it. I had no idea. <laughs> the, the fault line one is a collection of poems about connected with the, the earthquake and experiences of earthquakes. And what I did to produce that one was I took a line from each of the poem from each of the poems and put it into a into an AI uh, image producer, and it produced an image uh, or a collection of images um, related to that line of the poem. And I chose which I, the one that I thought was most appropriate. And when you don't, if you buy the book, it you know is uh, for five dollars, which goes to um, people in in uh, in Turkey to for disaster relief. Yes. If you buy the book, you can also download the images individually. You get the whole a zip file full of all the images as well. Uh -huh, um, if yeah, you want yeah. to use those for, for some other reason. I see that. Oh, they were created using AI and line of verse from each poem. Okay. Mm. All right. Wonderful. Um, I mean, that, that's something we haven't really touched on is, you know, ChatGTP is great, but the, the developments in an AI's abilities to produce images, there's a, a yeah. program called Mid Journey, which produces some stunningly beautiful images. The quality is just amazing. And, and again, you know, you can produce most of them for free. You know, it's just fantastic quality. Um, these kind of very surreal and uh, and imaginative images. I want to look at the apps. If you want to tell us a little bit about the apps that you created. Um, if, you, if you click on membership at the top there. Um, yeah. The main app, if you scroll down a bit. 
is is what's called the teacher's classroom app and this is an app that collects together all the materials all the lesson plans and videos and and various materials that I've, I've created and makes them accessible through this app so it's like i kind of think of it as like of an, a netflix for teachers you can go in there and find sort of a lesson that that you can do with your students and it's um sort of dynamic and and mm -hmm. uh, and um full of interactivity and and, and things that are very human on very basic human topics. There's a, a I've started doing a, a series on social emotional learning, um, which, teach stu which teaches students things like how to apologize or how to give a compliment. Mm -hmm. And sort of apologizing, for example, is, a, is, is, is something that we deal with in course books, but it's always, you know, uh, expressions for, for apologizing like saying I'm sorry or excuse me or something like that but in reality sort of apologizing to someone sincerely is a much more complex process you know and, and this lesson takes you through six steps to apologizing so there's the part well actually you acknowledge that you did something wrong and you 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 make the person aware of what you did wrong and that you should also you say sorry for it and you don't say any buts or make any excuses you say what you're going to do to rebuild trust and you know there's this whole process that you should go through when you're apologizing to apologize for it um sincerely and effectively and that that's something that we often don't go into as language mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. it's just that's i'm right. sorry or excuse me i wanted to ask about uh this little video that you have here uh -huh. not many people do that let me just click on welcome it welcome to feature publications i'm glad you dropped well. on our site and i hope you have a good look around at the different books and teaching materials that are here. our website you have any and you also have this below. You can use text. option that people can reply to you with text or video or an audio message. Um, why why do you have it there? And would you recommend other teachers have it on their website? How, how does that work? I, th I think it's quite a nice way. You know, if you're trying to sell something, especially through a website, it's very difficult to make that a kind of human experience. You know, I wanted a website that looked professional, but the more professional you look, the more you look like a company instead of a person. Yeah. And people yeah. like to interact with people, not with companies. So this kind of just gives it that human touch. Um, it's it's not used a lot and very few people send videos they usually send a text message with it but it sort of shows that I'm there as a as a person it helps to build trust and you know it, it helps to show a human side yeah for the company and I think that you know that's one of the challenges of doing business online yes. is to still be human you know yes yes um, we see uh, Nick's subscription here to his fabulous newsletter. Please, everybody, subscribe to um, read about uh, the hot, what's hot in uh, language teaching and educational technology uh, with the human touch. I've been, um, yeah, subscribed for 13 years and never unsubscribed, uh, which is um, quite a compliment, I would say, Nick. <laughs> That's great. And uh, I've, I still follow it. I still save it every time I go back to it and click on the on the links and apps that you uh, suggest and, and have a look around, uh, which brings me to um, an, a question from one of the teachers in our club. Uh, she would like to break into the ad tech um, field um, as, as, as a career. What resources, she's asking, uh, would you recommend her to follow? Uh, she already bought one of your books. Uh, she just messaged me in the messenger uh, after yesterday's invitation to our webinar here. Um, where would you recommend teachers to start who would like to go more into ed tech like you it's 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 i think it's a difficult thing to do there's certainly a lot more competition nowadays than there was when i first started you know there are very few people around doing ed tech for the first you know you know five to ten years of this this century in elt and so it's been and now especially post pandemic you know it's become a lot more competitive i think um 
you know, and it, it a lot of it depends on what you want. Where you know, ed tech is a quite a big field now, and it, it depends yeah. where you want to go within that. You no, know, I would recommend. You no, know, I recommend to everybody blogging. I mean, it's a bit. You know, it's become a bit kind of retro now, isn't it, to have a blog? But you know, I think it is still a good thing to do because you know it shows. It shows. It not only shows what what abilities you have and what talents you have. If you can sit down and write and put together an interesting, engaging article about some element of technology, it doesn't just show your skills, but it also helps you develop them. You know, I, I think if I went back to my first blog, you know, my first blog post, I'd be very red faced and ashamed. You know, and you know. For having done that over these years has really, really developed that skill of writing blog posts. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can still, you know, with my hand on my heart, go to Jack chat GTP and ask for one and think I could do much better than that, actually. You know, so so you know, and uh, you know, so I think it is it is a skill worth developing, becoming a good writer, developing the way you speak mm -hmm. about technology, be developing the way you think about technology. You know, I'd recommend, you know, uh uh, subscribing to as many kind of there are quite a few places where people who are developing new tools or new apps they submit them um, there's one called product hunt which is a very good one you know mm -hmm. and uh, everybody you know and another one called beta list um, and these are places where somebody who's developed an app puts it up there if you subscribe to them just check a few of those out every day and and you know think about how you could use them and start right choosing one that you think is good and write about it mm -hmm. you know, and that's the way to start developing yourself as a, somebody who thinks about technology and analyzes what it's good for writes for it and shares something of value for someone else because most people don't have the time or the ability to look at those different apps and see a way that they can use them and they need people who can help them do that you know whether it's doing it it could be doing it just through writing an article but it could also be making a video about it or something like that there's a guy called um charlie who does charlie's lessons who i who know yeah, charlie's lessons you know, very good. he does he does sort of great little videos that are really entertaining he's done one about my app my teacher's classroom app, actually and they're, they're sort of very entertaining has a really nice way of developing yeah. them and, you know he's very good in front of the camera you know if 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 you feel that you're you're good in front of the camera then do it that way but sort of do the thinking as well and do the thinking and and about how teachers can use this so you're producing something of value you know become part of the a yeah. social network build up your yeah. twitter connections your linkedin connections but don't build them for what you can get out of them but build them for what you can put in put in some value for people and that's how you'll get noticed because there are loads of people who are just screaming for attention on social media you know lots of them and they have nothing to offer but they want the attention but if you have something offer to offer the attention will come you know Yes, yes I agree. That's my experience as well. And yeah, the more you, the more you give, the more you get. But first, mm. go there with, um, yeah, with that thought in mind that you are going to give and you're going to share what you know, and then you're going to get. That's definitely my experience as well. Now, um, Nick. Thank you very much for taking the time to chat to me a little bit about uh, educational technology, the past, the present, and the future. Um, the last question, what, where do you think this will go for us in language teaching? Uh, what do you think is going to be big? Is it chat GPT? Is it something that we should pay the most attention to? Or what is it in educational technology that we should focus on the most? Yeah, for now, I think it's worth, worth putting some attention into chat GTP and to how you can make it work for you really effectively. You know, other things will come along and chat GTP will become other things. But, you know, artificial intelligence isn't going to go away. And, you know, it's what's happening at the moment. And, you know, it's quite a new field. So if you want to sort of break into educational technology, it's choose something like that to become good at. And, you know, it could be your opportunity to sort of make a name in the field. 
Yeah. And I know that you have a course coming up very yes, soon that's right, where we yeah. can learn. Can you tell us a little bit about it, please? Um, it will be launched on Monday or Tuesday, I think, depending on how much I work over the weekend. Um, you can get on the waiting list um, now. What, what it will look at, it will look at sort of, you know, what chat GTP is, how to work with it. Particularly, it will look at sort of prompt engineering and designing the prompts that you, you use to get, mm -hmm. get it to go, do good things for you. But it will also have lots of examples as well, lots of examples of how you can build a lesson or incorporate it into different types of lesson how you can learn grammar from it, how you can teach grammar from it. Um, a few of them, I've published a few conversations with it where I've just had a conversation with it about vocabulary and how to learn vocabulary and the things that it's kind of shared and uh, stuff like that. There are discussion groups on it. So if you want to discuss some of the issues with other teachers, you can do that. You'll become part of a community of teachers who will share together. We've got a Telegram community that we're going to start to get teachers sharing ideas about chat GDP. Um, you'll get a book with all the contents at the end. You'll get a certificate that says you've done the course and completed it. Um, and there'll be a whole list of other AI tools and uh, things that work alongside ChatGTP that could, should be of interest. And the, my idea is for it not to be a kind of, okay, I start the course on Monday and I finish it after a month, is that, you know, it's going to be a never ending course. You can finish it within a month, but, you know, I'm going to keep building things keep onto building it, it because ChatGTP mm -hmm. changes and, you know, every day. And, and hopefully the people who who kind of comment and who become part of the community will will be supplying things to build into it so that it keeps developing and we can keep adding new tools and articles to it so it should sort of keep growing organically after you join so once you join you know it, you get a lifetime membership it's not a subscription it's like you know you okay. pay pay your money at the beginning and you're there for life and hopefully we can keep you there for life or oh, 13 years like the, the, <laughs> the, the subscription to my years. magazine you know another 40 uh, 13 years mm. i am already on the waiting list and i cannot wait to take the course i will okay. absolutely take the course because it's something that's uh, of high interest to me ever since mm. The teachers started talking about it. I've been exper experimenting with it in my lessons with my clients and in my business. And as I mm -hmm. said before, it's already helping me and I don't feel like I'm going to be replaced. So I just want to learn yeah. how to how to be better at it. And I believe you can help me with it. So I'm really excited about the course. That's great. Good, good. Hope to see you on there soon. Yes. All right. So. I think this is it for tonight. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you would like to add about um, ELT, about EdTech, about the future, about your work, anything you would like to uh, finish off with? No, I, I think, you know, I, 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 there's, there's a saying in a, a Chinese, old Chinese saying that I really enjoy, which is, you know, may you live in interesting times. And it, it, it's an interesting saying because it can be used as a blessing or as a curse. You know, because, you know, you can, you can, if you don't like someone, you can curse them and say, may you live in interesting times, or you can make it a positive wish, may you live in interesting times, you know. Mm -hmm. And in the end, whether it's a blessing or a curse really depends on how we respond to our interesting times, because for sure oh, we are that. living in interesting times. And, you know, right. if, if you engage with it and you are interested in, you have curiosity, then it's a blessing. If you don't, then probably that's a curse. But, you know, that's up to you. What, which you make of it. Make so, it may we live in interesting times and take the Excellent. most out of it, get the most out of it and have fun with it and play with it like Mr. Peachy, because if we can uh, play our whole lives, what better is there about our jobs and our lives when they are playful and full of fun and joy? Uh, what else can we wish for? So, Nick, this was a very pleasant chat. Thank you very Great. much for Thank sharing. You very much. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.
and um, I hope to see you on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, where, everywhere where you are, I am as well, and we can continue co the conversation there and in, right. in your new course, of course, as well. So thank you and right. have thank a good evening. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.